you haven't followed me on Twitter. Just kidding. Uh, there I am, man. All kinds of GoLang stuff. So uh, we're going to do Go. And we're going to work on a problem I just gave in class. And we're going to do the response header. And so listen and serve takes a handler. So we've created our own ridiculous type. Hot dog. The underlying type is int. And we've attached to any value of type hot dog the method serve HTTP. With that particular signature, it has to have those uh, arguments. And uh, if it has serve HTTP and those arguments, if it has that signature, then uh, any type with that method then implements the handler interface, which means listen and serve. We could pass in a value of that type since it's a handler, and that's what listen and serve wants. Listen and serve wants a handler, and there's the handler interface, right? Which is what we have right here. So now I said, okay, we went and we looked at the standard library, and you have to remember, because somebody in class had a question about this, and I say that as if like there's a bunch of people in class. That's what I was looking for. You have to remember what's going on. IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, made a specification. They said this is what HTTP is. And we've learned that HTTP is a protocol that r runs on TCP and that we could build a TCP server to handle HTTP requests. Well, well what are HTTP requests? They are just text documents that are sent back and forth over a network, and they're structured in a certain way. So the Internet Engineering Task Force has determined how those should be structured. The most current specification is RFC 2730. RFC stands for Request for Comment. I said 2730. It's 7230. And I don't think I'm dyslexic. Lickstastic, which is it? Just kidding. So RFC 7230. And uh, we have a request that goes over to the server and a response that comes back from the server. And so the request that goes over has the request line and then the headers and then the payload if it's a form submission, it's the body. And then the response that comes back is the status line and then the headers and then the body, which is the page. So we saw that the request line is made up of what? What's the request line? Somebody say it back to me. Nina, say it back to me. Request line starts out with what? What's the first thing in the request line? It is the HTTP yeah. method. method. Right? What's the next thing in the request line? It is Gentry? Space. A space. Yeah, you got it. What's the next thing in the request line? It's method, space, method. and then URI, mm -hmm. and then space, and then HTTP. 1.1, the version, and then carriage return line feed. And in the status line, what's the first thing in the status line? The HTTP version. And then a space, and then the status code, 200, 404, 302, and then a space, and then the reason phrase. Okay, not found, you know, uh, redirect or whatever it is. And then carriage return line feed. So we were looking at that, now we're looking at headers. And so with the headers, Right? We went in, oh, that's probably not a good thing to show everybody in the world. We went into, uh, ah, another good thing not to show everybody in the world. I'm just going to close these not good things to show everybody in the world. <laughs> we went to, um, you know, GoDoc, and we looked at the NetHTTP thing, and so we got to that handler part, right? And we saw that the handler has a request and a response writer. The request is a struct, so we're looking at those different things in the struct. And we're like, oh, we could access this stuff and display some of it. And then the response writer is an interface, and it has these three methods. Because interfaces always have methods. They define behavior. And so here is a header method. And if we call the header method, we get back a header. Well, a header is a type that has a map with a key of a string and a value of a slice of string. And then if you have a value of type header, you have these methods. Right? And so when we have those methods, we could add, delete, get, set, write. Right? So we could add, adds the key value pair to the header. It appends to any existing values. Set, sets the header entries associated with the key to the single element, replaces any existing values. Right? So let's see if we can't like set a header. And so I want to set a header. And if you read the documentation on this deal here, you have to write your headers before write header is called. And write header, right? Ooh, look at how much write header shows up in that. 
right? If right header has not yet been called, write calls right header. So when we, you know, send our response to like io.write string or funct f print line and then, you know, print to the response because that takes a writer and this is a writer, right, because it has that method. Um, then uh, write is called and write calls write header. And we have to set headers before write header is called. Otherwise, the header's already been written. You can't set headers anymore. So before I kind of write to my response, I want to set headers. All right. And uh, I'm going to do my response.header, call that. And then I could do set. And it wants a key and a value, and they're both strings. And so my key could be t key. And my value could be this is from Todd. I don't know. Can I make my own header? Is it funny when I say it like that? Does that help? And, uh, and I'm already in 05, and up here I'm in 21.00 temp, so I better go to where I am. Actually, I'm just going to copy this to where I am. Whoop. And then come down here, close all these. And do right here. That's not what I want. Close all those. I want this one. Let's take a vote. How many, how many people think I'm going to set a header and we'll be able to see it in the browser? So what's the T key then? Okay, let's make what's it a Nina key. That's the key, and this is from Nina. Nina! Okay. So... Request header, response header. That's interesting. Nina key, this is from Nina. So what if I wanted to change this from text plane? Can you just go back to let me look at the code again before you go on to the next thing? Yeah, but the more important thing is knowing why that's what you put in. Okay, and so that's what, if we look at the documentation, right, we have response writer. Where is response writer? Use. Right, response writer is right here in type handler because a re when you're serving HTTP, you've got a request and a response. The request comes in, it has information. The response goes back out, it has information. The request has a request line, headers, and a payload if it's a form submission, right? The response has a status line, headers, and body, the payload, right? So when you're serving HTTP, you've got a request and a response, right? The request is a struct. And it has a bunch of fields. We could pull that information out. The response writer is an interface. It implements the writer interface. It also has a header method. When we call the header method, we get back a value of type header. If we have a value of type header, we have these methods associated with it. And so we could then response right that's our response it's type response writer type response writer is that interface with that header deal right so response has this method we call it this chunk of code gives us back a header right and so we could do HTTP header set but that's not going to set it because it needs to be set on the response 
you know we have to get we have to get the header for this response and then we just set we give it a key and a value and why a key and a value because this gives us back a header and the header asks for it's a map of the key and a value and so this function right here set is wanting a key and a value so the important thing is just like seeing how all those little things fit together. Can you show us again in the browser how you find that then? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to add one more in. Well, I'm going to change this because people don't know Nina. Yeah, right. So you could, yeah, you could do, uh, I don't know if I still have that in memory. Yeah, I do. So you could do content type. All right, and now So if this content type was plain, text plain, right, it's just plain text. And to see that, I go into Developer Tools Network, and I click on the file that came back, and it shows me the header, and it says text plain, and the cloud key, this is from the cloud. And so... Notice it capitalized that. It likes capitalization. But if I change this to text HTML, like the browser looks for those headers and uses them. Ready? Text HTML. Any code you want in this font that's looking like HTML, take off the mobile. And look at it. Now it's text HTML. Questions?